And we're live. All right, thank oh, you guys for joining us. Uh, Tang was playing with his graph here for a second. <laughs> um, and yes, you guys in the comments, we're technically one minute late. I'm sorry, that's to you, Mario Vivas, whoever uh, you are watching. I hope I said your name correctly. Uh, He's hyped. Yes, he is, and we've got Brian and Tang from Jag Precision. And if you can't already tell, we have a lot of guns on this table here, which I'm totally behind. Um, let me flip these around. Uh, so to start off with, uh, thank you guys for coming out. Thank you for bringing uh, so much weaponry. Um, I'm actually kind of curious to hear your thoughts on each and every one of these guns. Um, starting with the MTC, because you guys are going to be doing a giveaway on this, right? Yes. He is. Nice. Well, tell us all about it. Okay, if you guys follow me on Instagram, Brian Echo one basically I'm giving away this MTC-3. Uh, it's going to be a custom gearbox and externals, like a CXO. So once I get to 10,000 followers on Instagram, I'm just going to pick a lucky winner and give it away. No purchase, no nothing. Um, just want to say thank you for support and help someone have a fun time on the field. It's already shooting around 500 FPS. Cool. Yeah, so all you have to do is uh, follow me on Instagram, Brian Echo one um, I think we have links in this video. If not, just search and you'll find me. And I have a, thank you. Yeah. And I already have like the um, little blog talking about this show in the internals and I'll do a video. So it's gonna be a cool contest and prize. So thank you. Nice. Uh, Manuel Jimenez, uh, you're saying, can I please get a free gun? I'm poor, LOL. Well, you can make that uh, closer to a reality by following Brian at Echo One on Instagram and pushing a lot of your friends to do that so they can give away this gun once he reaches 10,000 followers. You mind mm -hmm. if I pick it up? Yeah, go for it. Excellent, I was gonna do it anyway. Awesome, yeah, this is a- It's got the stippling, it's got the speed trigger, it's got the scopes. You guys did the stippling yourselves, right? Yeah. Nice, that's actually, that's really good feel on this rifle. I really like this grip too. So, very well played. So yeah, if you guys want to take advantage of that, if you're looking for a free gun or something to add to your inventory, get in that contest by, uh, well, following Brian and Echo Water on Instagram and pushing that to a lot of your friends. Now, let's go to one of my tried and tested and true and favorite guns, which is your, I know I totally screwed that up, but uh, mm -hmm. your line of ENL AKs. Why don't you uh, tell our viewers about this, because you recently came out with, I believe, the Gen 2 version, right? Do you want to go over that or do you want me to? Okay. I can. Um, so, Gen 2, um, there's not too many changes on the outside because it's already perfect. Um, all steel construction front to back. Shake if you run it. a magnet all the way through, I mean, there's not a hint harder. of pot metal. Nope. Um, everything's, everything that's supposed to be cast is cast. Everything that's forged is supposed to be forged. Everything that's supposed to be stamped is stamped. Uh, with the Gen 2 internals, you have the magwell spacer, so you can uh, insert the magazine without, nice. you know, uh, any snags, which is a common problem with a lot of <laughs> As I did right there. I'm not the best at inserting and uh, extracting AK mags, to be honest. There we okay. go. That's easy. You know, so you're less likely to damage them or get a mag to lock. To show them. Oh, yes, absolutely. I don't think That'd you can be the magwell spacers. That's not right available there. in any other ENL or non ENL or previous generation or non ENL guns. So only, um, only the Gen 2s. Gen 2s. Nice. Um, you also have the new uh, gearbox, which has a quick change spring system, uh, CNC steel cut gears, uh, one piece cylinder. O-ring, air seal nozzle, and so on. So those shoot pretty hard and consistently compared to the old ones. And so basically the inside's been done from the ground up again. Mm -hmm. um, now just on my own personal um, uh, history of using ENLA case, uh, I am very rough on my guns. Uh, I generally bang them into walls. Sometimes uh, the slings, uh, well, they just kind of fall off my person. Uh, I generally don't treat them with the care and respect that I ought to as far as uh, keeping them functional at the end of a game. However, uh, the ENLA case, I've had a lot of success uh, in not breaking them. I mean, I, I was playing up a Ford Ord, I banged it in the doors, I dropped it on concrete stairways. I mean, I really, really banged it up and it was still functioning at the end of the day. Now, if I'd thrown it off a second or third story building, maybe not as much, but I wasn't actively trying to bust it up. I was just normally being careless, so. Uh, but you guys actually have thrown this off of a building before. Right, mm -hmm. and that gun, we're keeping it, still shoots just fine, it shoots at 400. Mm -hmm. um, the only noticeable thing is it has a, it's visible slightly... curve yeah. just yeah. because yeah. of how it impacted. Um, again, that's because it's stamped steel for the receiver. Unlike other metal airsoft AKs, which you get uh, pot metal cast, you know, zinc alloy, which will just crack um, under any kind of stress, whether you bang it into the wall or whatever. So that gun actually survived the fall. Even the front sight, which on other guns would be like cast zinc pot metal again, mm -hmm. um, all it did was bend for our gun. So everything's still intact on the gun. The wood didn't even crack on the gun. It was nice. an AKM that we threw off. Super solid. Now, I remember seeing you guys drop that off, and I was like, hey, guys, why is this, like, slightly curved? You're like, oh, we threw that off the third floor of a building. I'm like, 
Good answer. All right, that totally makes sense. So, wow, and uh, still functional still. So mm -hmm. that's pretty impressive. And then we also ran it over with the truck afterwards. Yeah. Or I did. That's even funnier. I wish you guys had mentioned that the first time. No um, video of that. Just just something to mention. For just, just for fun. Still works. Nice. Uh, now let's see if there are any questions. And by the way, guys, if you have any questions on JAG products, uh, please throw them in the comments section below, uh, and we'll get to them and try to answer them as quickly as we can. Hey, Bill, what's your favorite Star Wars game? My name is Bob, sir. My name is Bob. Let's get Bill. <laughs> Bill. Bill. <laughs> Bill, what's your favorite Star, game, Star Wars game? Um, I, I like Star Wars Battlefront. <laughs> uh, I was going to say I do like Star Wars Battlefront, but um, I'm actually <laughs> blanking. Oh, no. My favorite Star Wars game is uh, X-Wing. That is an old game, and it's an obscene amount of fun, and it's classic. Do you guys have any favorite Star Wars games? Mm, mm. I like the Super Nintendo ones. Those were actually pretty good. Uh, shoot. I'm thinking N64. What was the one on the Super Nintendo? Um, they had the whole trilogy. Oh, here comes the What's your answer. favorite game? Knights of the Old Republic or <laughs> or Force Unleashed 2. I'm kind of torn between the two. All right, you may leave. <laughs> Nerd! <laughs> nice. Uh, anyway, my graph shows otherwise. <laughs> uh, Tang made a very helpful graph. Um, do, 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 do. Hey, Poland. Uh, I guess someone from Poland was here, which is awesome. Cool. What's up, Poland? Uh, you want a shout out? And I, I forgot to mention this will be a shout out free live show. Care of Jag Precision, correct? Yes. Nice. Just, um, just do one five. Do five shout outs. Five shout outs. Five. All right. Of Poland. your choosing. choosing. Uh, who's choosing? No, of your choosing. Of my yeah, choosing? Five. All right. Well, because I'm partial to the country of Poland, Poland, your shout out is approved. All right. Moving on. Um, let's see. Why don't we talk about uh, the DMR set of you guys, Brock? Put these on. What? Four. No, no, just no. leave them. Yeah, no, put them on the floor. Or no, leave them right there. Leave them. Or no, you can put them on the floor. Uh, leave there's them. not enough room. You Anyways, put them on the floor. Can you see that? Can yeah, you see you can. that? Oh, absolutely. It is totally it's a little bit Nice. Yeah. So many guns on the table. Here. Put it more towards this way. More space. Yeah, there you go. All right. Well, Ooh. tell us about it. Okay. Basically, we get a lot of questions on, hey, how do you build this gun? What would you recommend? And we decided to take three of the PHX rifles, um, basically the Jag Arms PHX 15 rifles, and make them into like an SPR DMR type rifle, a field rifle, and then like a CQB rifle to basically show you how to make that and give you an idea so you can go to airsoftgi.com and get all these parts. Get your imagination get going. Yeah, basically to show you further on back, as Mario would say. I was gonna say that, <laughs> but basically. Okay, well let me go ahead and start on this. On the front, I wanted to make a SPR type, so I used the Echo One SPR barrel set, mostly because it has a cool break that you guys see in video games, movies, and then a flip up front sight. But I didn't want to use like the SPR handguard that everybody says it's a D-Boys or something like that, so I went with the Mad Bull. SPR handguard, that's the PRI Gen 3, and it's 12.5 inch, just because it's a different color, and it's a lightweight polymer, it's not like a heavy zinc or aluminum, whatever that is, it's pretty light rifle. Yeah, the still. real one's like the carbon fiber. Yeah, anyway. uh, Mad Bull does make a carbon fiber option as well, but that's very expensive, and I think it's discontinued, but it's more true to life for the manufacturing. Um, and then on top I have the uh, adjoining the SPR, really. the SPR, the 12.5. So basically, it will lock the upper and the receiver together. So you have a true floating barrel. You don't have to worry about this weird barrel flex or anything like you find in other rifles. And flat top for your optic. And basically, good to go. Mm. Well, I like how you emphasize that, the last part of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, this is a very good setup. Uh, I, I definitely think it's a really unique and uh, aggressive looking one. It definitely shows the versatility of the platform. Um, is this something that you would normally run in a game? I mean, do you run DMR platforms very often? We did. Um, long ago, yes. Long ago. I used hurricane kits. And oh, wow. That was back in the day. Yeah. Like mid-2000s, yes. But now you need multiple shots to get a kill, so it's kind of... Disappointing. Why? Why do you need multiple shots? Is that because the honor of the players in the field is in question, or because something else? Um, there's a bit of the honor, and then there's a bit of, I guess, plate carriers. Even though you can hear it, so it's just. Yeah, I kind of got impatient. I kind of went the route of support gunner. It, I like that. It's just fun. Mm -hmm. so. I, I have noticed you doing uh, more more machine gun rigs recently. Yeah. Um, well, you would look very silly being six foot, whatever. And carrying a small gun like this. Yeah. 
I mean, there is comedic value in that. Well, I have a tiny gun like that from back <laughs> in the day, but as a backup. Yeah. Okay, fair point. I like building this stuff, so if someone wanted to take this idea and use it themselves and say, hey, that worked great, that would make my day. So. No, I think a lot of these builds are very intuitive. I personally prefer the field gun setup. I, I really like how you guys have that going. Oh, that's my baby. Oh, is it really? This is um, when we had the PHX rifles and we we're going to go to a Milsim game. I said, I want this one and I'm going to use it to the fullest. So I decided to make it my Milsim field and cover everything out the door rifle. So I use this. This is going to be the Jagarms PHX-15 Recce Rifle. It's going to have the 13-inch M-Lock handguard. So with this, I have the Strike Link Curve Grip. It fits my hand perfect. Just mm -hmm. hold it. No, I was, I was just going to say, it does look, it, one, it looks aggressive, but it's also very comfortable. Yes. And it's very lightweight, and it locks right in place. I didn't want this rifle to be like clumber, or cumbersome and get in the way, so it bolts in there. It's interesting the screws with, on the back. Yeah. You can technically flip it around, I read on their website. Really? So, however you see fit, you can use it as a barricade brace, ram it up against something and fire. Mm. So you can do that. So I made this a very lightweight, simple rifle with a bright flashlight on the front. And can the cool Mario offset, the back. rotate, rotate. Okay. Oh, oh. oh snap, oh snap, look at that. Offset. So a close that range. for uh, M-Lock, or I'm sorry. The, the grip. Is it only for M-Lock? Oh, no, that's for M-Lock or Keymon. That's the cool thing about the Strike Industries grip. Um, it bolts into the bottom for M-Lock or Keymon. You just rotate the little lugs in there, and you're good to go. But as I was saying, like you have the offset sights. So I have the 1 to 4 optic, which is basically what you need <coughs> for um, Milsim events. To see out there, identify targets. But if they're too close, you don't want to sit there and fiddle with your 4 zoom. You can just... Um, rotate the rifle a little, and use your iron sights. Hop up won't be affected if you're shooting within like 50 feet or so or a little further. Also, if you're using heavy BBs, it's not going to be crazy spin and you're, you're fine. Um, kept the pistol grip. I like it because there's no finger groove. Not a big fan of that. That's the A1 M16. Yeah, the so. grip comes standard with the PHX rifle and the stock. The stock, a lot of people say it looks big, but the fact that you can hold a large brick lipo or a buffer tube or both if you want to run them. Um, you can do that, and it will last all weekend. I was in the rain and mud. No water got in here because it had this cool little function. I was just going to mention, I really like, like that. that that tab uh, tab switch you have. Right yeah, there. there's it's tabs, so you don't have to worry about the, the whole squeezing the back of the crane stock, which is fine, but it's just basically we decided, hey, let's make a cool rifle, and this is what we did. So Nice. Very intuitive setup. Um, where can people get those uh, mags? Um, you guys should have them. These are the SOCOM gear Lancer um, mid-caps. They're still right. Available. Those would usually come in a five-pack, and they feed very, they have very it's strong... 190 um, rounds. It's a double stack, like a zigzag type. Yeah, yeah, strong spring, so it's really good for, like, HPA setups, high rate of fire yes. and stuff. Hmm, that's really neat. Yeah. I always like those uh, semi-see-through mags. I think they look a lot cooler. Yeah. Um, someone was asking what DMR stands for. I, I believe all of us here know. Designated Marksman Rifle. Oh, I'm glad you said it because I had no idea. No, oh. I, I totally knew. Um, so yeah, Designated Marksman Rifle. Uh, I can't remember the person you asked, uh, but that's that's uh, for essentially if you're going for a longer range platform um, and you don't want a bolt action sniper rifle, a lot of folks would err on the side of a Designated Marksman Rifle, which gives you those follow-up shots because mm -hmm. it's generally on semi-automatic. Um, do you find yourself using DMR platforms a lot? Either one of you, I know you guys mentioned you said you, you used to. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you don't like, I'm trying to remember what you said earlier, is that, you know, you'd have to go to a DMR or light machine gun platform because people weren't calling their hits or they're taking, they would take only one of them and it wouldn't call them out. Yeah. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the bullet tax rifle. I'm not, I don't have the patience for it. Yeah. I appreciate the build quality. Back in the day, I had a Maruzen APS-2 and oh, all nice. the parts. And when I worked retail, I had basically a lot of orders to build L96 moves and stuff and all that stuff. So I know how to do it. I like it. I just don't have the patience. Um, for the same auto DMRs, I love them because you can tap fire, fire, fire. But if they, if they don't call it, it's... Well, yeah. It's I mean, insane. like anything in Airsoft, if they don't call it, it kind of ruins the game. 
Um, and speaking on calling it, uh, although it's completely not related at all, uh, someone was asking about you know a good or an affordable pistol uh, to use as a sidearm. And I know you guys have been using uh, the Echo and Tibble for a number of years. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys have also done a lot of custom work on your guys' own personal pistols, uh, like stippling, and I think you've added a flashlight and a custom holster, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll probably uh, be retiring those soon and then just switching over to like the SOCOM Gear 1911s. It's yeah. just more popular at the moment, oh, especially if true. you're doing like Marine loadout. Mm -hmm. yeah, so are you guys both going to do Blue Diamond Group? Probably. Mm, maybe we know maybe people. Not. You know people. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let's... Not really. Why is <laughs> someone saying that in the chat? Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. Swagmaster, no. <laughs> yeah, we're not doing that, Swagmaster, but thanks for asking. Uh, Bob, do you conceal... <laughs> what? He's going again. What, what's going again? Um, tell Brian that Night Stalker, Night Stalker's Airsoft loves the Mad Bull Rail, which is interesting because, is this a Mad Bull Rail over here? What? I think it was talking oh, about the SPR. Bring... What's up? Yeah. I think it was talking about on the SPR. Oh, okay. Well, we have other Mad Bull stuff. Might as well bring those out. Might as well. Do the fresh avocado dance. I don't even know what that right. means. Does anyone know what the fresh avocado dance means? No. That's next year's meme. Oh, okay. Next year's? Yeah. yeah. We're getting ready. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, that being said, while we're getting this stuff out here, I want to let you guys know we still have less than a, a little bit less than 20 mystery boxes left of our future mystery box. Uh, we're probably not going to be doing a mystery box for a little while, so if you want to get on it, I would suggest getting on it now. Um, you're going to have a big chance to win uh, the v uh, wide variety of VFC scars in this mystery box. That's why the price is a little bit higher out there, but you can use free shipping. So get on our website, check out the VF, or excuse me, check out the future weapons mystery box currently available and also we are going to be having a sale this weekend it is the summer black friday sale uh it's going to be going on coast to coast each one will walk in stores texas california and virginia we're going to be having doorbusters deals and discounts and at our california walk-in store this weekend in addition to that sale we're going to be having a swap meet where you can show up sell some of your old guns gear and accessories you can uh, sign up at our California walk-in store before the day of the event, and you can uh, try and get uh, tables, chairs, and easy ups. First come, first serve. You can also sign up the day of the event, but you're not guaranteed a slot. So head on over to California walk-in store for that swap meet or each one of our walk-in stores this weekend and online for doorbusters, discounts, and more. What do you got? The world of Mad Bull, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mad Bull, as you guys know, have been around for a long time making quality parts and internal parts and accessories as well. A lot of it revolves around licensed things like those magazines you just saw. Uh, matching that would be the like Lantac um, licensed metal bodies by Mad Bull. Nice. There's numerous licenses they have. They have Daniel Defense, they got mm -hmm. um, Noveski, Troy um, Industries. A lot of, uh, you know, if you really like trademarks, then, you know, Mad Bull Body is probably the one to get. So you can continue off the Lantac theme with the magazine, with this, or sorry, that was a different ma magazine. Lantac uh, body, we have their Dragon uh, muzzle brake, you know. They also do other ones like PWS rails. Here's one installed in upper, uh, the PWS Diablo. They also do like the inner barrels. Can you go into those, Brian? Yeah. For the inner barrels, they started with the Black Python long ago. It's a 6.03, uh, made out of aluminum. It's high quality, very affordable. It's one of the most popular inner barrels on the market. And all the variable lengths, also for pistols and bolt actions like the M28 and the VSR-10. So that's a great barrel. Um, the next grade up would be the Ultimate version. It's a 6.01. So it's a tighter bore and it's made of air, aircraft grade aluminum. So it's higher quality, but still same affordable price. And for some of the longer barrel rifles, there's like a barrel flip like you find in real rifles and for airsoft. So they came out with the steel bore version. Um, it's, of course, it's going to be the long version, like 650 down to like short ones. These are just like fit on the table, but made out of solid steel and 6.03. So now you have three options to find out which barrel you like and which performs the best. Uh, so that's another way Mad Bull gives you all the parts you need for inside and outside. They also make pistons, spring guides to match. So if you wanted to build a rifle, you can check out airsoftgi.com and literally build everything from the front of your gun to the stock. They make the A stock, the body, the inner barrel, everything. 
Now we carry, like you just uh, mentioned, we carry a wide variety of mm -hmm. your internal and external parts. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned all that stuff because if you guys want a custom gun or if you want something built to your specs with specific parts, you can always give our customer service phone line a call, tell us your budget, tell us what you like to do. And even if you have specific parts, you can tell us that too because they have a direct line to the tech department so they can make that dream gun or that custom gun build happen for you. Uh, you can also sh uh, head on to any of our walk-in stores and do the very same thing. Talk to any of our knowledgeable staff. Uh, and we make sure that pretty much the vast majority of our staff are people who have played or have a lot of experience in the airsoft community. Uh, so you can be sure if you come on out and you want to do something custom or a really specific build, especially using Mad Bull or Jag Precision parts, you can head on over, over a walk-in stores and get that build accomplished. And speaking of that Lantac body, I know you, all of us here have been playing for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, now, you mentioned hurricane bodies earlier. I mean, back in the day, to get a, a, a metal body for an airsoft gun, it was like 200 bucks or yes. 200 plus. Mm -hmm. Now, what, I mean, can, give me an example. Like, what's the pricing on some of these bodies? This is sub 150. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus, they'll come with the uh, ultimate hop up. They'll come with the small parts, the body pins. The hop up alone is probably worth it because it yeah. is a mm -hmm. high quality hop up unit. It's a dial type. Um, which is a, actually Brian's design a long time ago. Oh, yeah. really? Um, I don't want to get Brian cut in front of you. It can also the accept box. the ultimate LED add-on, which allows you to basically do the same thing as a tracer mag, where it's built Wait, into Wait, it the comes hub. with the body? What? The <laughs> ultimate LED? No, the no. LED is available to install in the hop-up. The oh, hop-up is cool. Included. So you get a It'll lot It'll come with the hop-up, so you have the little BB holding O-ring, so you don't drop your... Your BBs you know, like when you get the magazine, you drop mm -hmm. four BBs. You have the rotary style hop up, um, solid metal, and your little peg. So if you wanted to put the LED on there, you can. So cool options. This is included. Place here the small metal parts to go on here for the little pins, and then steel parts for like the forward assist mm -hmm. and other things like that. So it's just a lot of little details added in there. Back in the day, when you'd buy a metal body kit, they said, "Oh, here's your body kit." You need to do this guesswork of which hop up works. How come this body pin doesn't fit? And it would cost for it would take forever, cost so much to have the guy at the shop build it for you. Now it's already done because all the parts fit. Uh, Airsoft Titan is asking, how much is that gun on the table? Uh, currently, we don't have a gun on the table. We just have a metal body as well as an upper here. So uh, I know the answer. Okay. Call Airsoft GI's customer service and their tech department and say, at so and so time in the video, how much is that? And they'll ring you up. That is actually a very good one. <laughs> all the guns, um, all the M4 base guns today are Jag PHX 15s. Yeah. Jag Arms PHX 15s. Well, yeah. Yes, yeah, the PHX-15 is a very good line, very versatile line, which is uh, amply demonstrated by the different setups you guys have. Uh, but let us know if you were referring to the MTC, which looks kind of like G36, or uh, the AK we have recently on the, on the table as well. Uh, but yes, this is the PHX-15, their SBR short-barreled rifle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And that's, uh, it's got some random Bravo accessories here, like Peck Box, the site. Um, what is it? Hey, we didn't cover this one. Yeah. PWS uh, muzzle brake that's licensed to Mad Bull. Um, also have the modify mid cap this time in black. Yes. And again, A1 pistol grip with the LCS stock. Cool thing about like the PHX rifles, if you're wanting to build a rifle for like the DMR or the field or the CQB, for example, um, the reason behind this <coughs> one, the LCS can use a large brick lipo. And since there's already a torque motor and a MOSFET built in, out of the box, you can shoot 25 a second with no issues, and it's going to hold up with the mid cap. It comes with a regular uh, BFC based mid cap, but if you want to use any other mid caps, that's all you have to do is put a lipo and BBs, and you're basically good to go. Um, now, do you guys normally run lipos in the guns you guys use? Yeah, all yeah, the time. Absolutely. Oh, now that makes sense with the high fire. Knife pads. <laughs> <laughs> um, Actually, let me just, I want to test out this stock, because that's, I, I, I've actually never seen that feature on a stock of just this uh, tab you switch the side. Oh, let me try it again. Do it from the yeah, top. There, there you go. go. All the way in there. That's nice. That's nice. It's easy to do one uh, with with gloves on. Yes. Which is really nice, because sometimes you, when you're not as dexterous in the middle of a battle, and you do need to change a, a battery out, that can be a really big pain in the ass. And that's another issue. In extreme cold, the little tab you have to squeeze in will break off, just because it's very it's cold. It's brittle. Yeah, yeah. It's brittle. Yeah. And the cool thing about this is it's, it's not like a submersible submarine seal or anything like that. It's just plastic on plastic, but it keeps most of the water out. 
and there's no front opening so you have to hold the gun like this in the rain and you might get water in there but normal field play you're not going to get water in there nice. yeah and if you're running something that's really not designed with airsoft in mind like a mag pull stock or something like that you can't really fit a battery without having to go through a lot of hassle to take it off yeah so you usually have to do like pivot this which takes a lot of effort for some people mm -hmm. i mean i have pretty large hands so it's like not difficult for me yes you do I don't know where to go with that. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Anyways. Um, yep. All right. Um, is 20% off at the sale include everything at the store? I believe it includes uh, all items excluding map items. So yes and no. We, we, can't, uh, we can't discount uh, uh, map items with, I believe, one or two exceptions. Uh, however, we will have 20% off everything else in the store. Um, actually, this is an interesting question. Um, do you guys have any favorite bullpup guns? Tokyo Mary Steyer, civilian and military. Why do you like the Steyer? Out, out of curiosity, and he's all. Yeah, just to clarify, the Steyer Aug. Yes. Yes. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I had three of them long ago. I like the weird guns. Mm -hmm. Don't judge me. Um, Judging. <laughs> I just like it because the, the looking at the stats, you have this small Look rifle. Look at these stats. Yes, these stats. Look at these stats. I need That's how good they are. Anyways, the thing that won me over for the Steyr was you have a short gun that's just about this size overall. Maybe a smidge longer, but it has M16 inner barrel in there. So, you know, we had, uh, growing up, we had an acre and a half to play on in our backyard. And we had outdoor field with bunkers and everything. So it's like, hmm, long barrel, compact design, it's going to be a win. I already started with like a MP5 by Marui and a YMP Famas. Oh, wow. Yeah. Back in the day. So the Steyr was like the next best thing, and it was amazing because it's quiet. Only weird thing is um, the mags. No one yep. had mags. It took, I think, a month to order mags from Hong Kong War Game Club. No, seven four seven imports, and it took forever. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. And then Are magically, they still no, they're gone. Yeah. They're, okay, they're don't like, go there. Yeah. No, now you can find mags everywhere and this and that, but it still uses weird mags. And when people say, oh, the bull pop, it's hard to work that. Same thing if you're an M4 user, you have this, you close your eyes and like like that. Same for an AK user. It's just muscle memory. Yeah, so, I mean, with any platform, if you train with it, it's just become, yeah. gonna become muscle memory, just like you said. Um, but those the those Tokyo Tokyo Marui uh, Star Augs, it's interesting that that was that's your favorite bull pup. Uh, I still have the green one. Was that the the, the original? Pretty Wait, much. no, I have my I have a civilian one with uh, the military upper. I basically bought two and switched them. That was expensive. Yeah, well, the original civilian version, if I remember correctly, that was like a super heavy one, wasn't it? Mm. That's the one with the scope. No, it had the nitrogen filled scope, so it never fogs. Ooh. <laughs> Seriously, I love that thing. Anyways. Um. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just curious because my friend had one grown up, and uh, you know we would play ourselves together a lot, and one of the things I noticed on his Token Marui Aug uh, was that he would, after a while of playing, um, he really couldn't semi-auto anymore. It would just always be full auto because how the trigger works, you pull half down at semi, mm -hmm. pull all the way, it's full auto, and after a while it just stopped working. And so. that's the Achilles heel of those guns. Yeah. Well, technically, if you... <laughs> technically, if you fine-tune the wire harness and you clean it you're fine you don't need to do that then and you'll be good for 30,000 shots yeah. according to my craft i even had that before mosfets kidding any four lipos of course but no problems mm. uh now tang do you have uh, do you have any favorite bull pups yeah what no, is it? i absolutely don't like bull pups. okay Sorry. okay no, not a, not a big bull <laughs> next <pup>. question <laughs> um for me uh i actually really like the tavor series of guns and part of that is that i fired the real one and i really like the real one um, so when I finally get to use it for airsoft, it's pretty cool. And I also like guns you can wield one-handed, similar to the AUG. Um, mm -hmm. Bullpup guns. You know, they're most, balanced. Yeah, they're balanced. And the, for some of the guns, a lot of the weight is centered in the back, too. Uh, so that makes it easier to navigate using uh, just one hand. Um, someone's asking about AK accessories. Like, tell us about some accessories you can put on an AK or what we might want to use. Um, do you guys, I mean, I feel like every time I've seen you run an AK, it's been pretty bare-bones stock. Correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just running back and forth between like an underfolder AK, so yeah. very stock looking. Underfolders look awesome though. Yeah, it's not like uh, you know the easiest to control since you're not using the stock. But it looks cooler when it's folded. Mm. For the airsoft AKs, 
there's a couple of aftermarket grips, some stocks out there, different replace, masks, of course. Basically, like ones that allow you to put M4 buffer tubes. Some yeah. of them replace this uh, side folding guy. You can uh, add a top rail, like take off the dust cover, mm -hmm. and you swap it out. Cool. You can also. I mean, you already have a side rail on there as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. But finding a side rail optic, if it's a correct um, piece or correct, like Russian style, that can be really expensive. Or if you have like this weird bulky thing with like a flat top rail and then like a, a red dot, it kind of doesn't look the same. It looks kind of cheesy. It looks cheesy, but I mean, there are also a lot of, I mean, forgive me for saying it, a lot of video games, a lot of movies that do do that. Yes. And, I mean, that's what I see a lot of, at least uh, for the past couple years in the field, is people buying that that side folding rail mount where you just slide on there and you have a rail It on may top. or may not yeah. be practical because you might have to take it off every time to take this off to that's, change your battery. That's yes. the big issue is, yeah, getting the battery in and out with that accessory on there. Um, well, that's the cool thing about Airsoft, the fact that you can buy your Airsoft gun and put a scope here or here. Or even up front, they even have the rail section up here. There's ones that replace the rear sight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the fact that you can have all these options, for AKs, it's not as many as an M4. But the fact that you can still do that, it's like an ultimate hobby. You can get out, you build it, and then get out and use it with your friends. So. Uh, now, me personally, as far as accessories, I run with an AK. Um, I've done a variety of different AK builds uh, from tactical uh, to just your basic barebone stock AK. And that's, I've been using the basic barebone stock AK for a little while now. And the main thing I've been doing, which I've been told is very Russian of me, is to just get a flashlight, get some electrical tape, and just tape that thing on there. It works. So, yeah, it works. And that's half the battle. If it's, <laughs> let's see. G.I. Joe. Let's see. If it's stupid, but it works then it isn't stupid, so I'm going to go mm -hmm. with that. Um, I'm not huge with AKs, but that one is cool. I'm going to say thank you on behalf of the guys at Jag Precision before they can. So That's the uh, A105 model. A AKA 105? A105 is the skew for the ENL, but it's like actually an AKS-74. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm trying to remember the model number of... The, my favorite one you guys have. I think it's the AK ones are cool. That's, that's yeah. the 110 series. AK, uh, well, it's not AK 110, but. Let's see. It's going to take a while to pull up. But I'm a big fan of your ENL AK PMC. Uh, I thought it was like PMC D. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. D. The D has the craziest rail, and then like they start with. They all have the M4 stock. Mm -hmm. It's more modernized, too. Yeah. So PMC is basically private military con. Contractor, contractor style. Yeah, essentially that ENLIK just comes with a lot of real estate, comes with an M4 style uh, buffer tube and stock. Mm -hmm. uh, so pretty much threads threads the needle of like, you know, the availability of putting on extra accessories like an M4 versus, you know, the ruggedness of an AK uh, and specifically from ENL, which is incredibly rugged on top of everything else. Um, now let's see. Let's see if there are any comments that we can go back to and answer. Is anyone going to Fold a Gap in NC in October? Have you guys ever been to Fold a Gap? No. Uh, we always hear about it. I've always wanted to go, but I've, I've heard it's like just a bait, like a huge, huge BB slug fest. Like there's just a line down the center and just people exchanging BBs. So, oh, I've seen you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, from so, our side, like we're basically a distributor, so a lot of the companies we sell to, other retailers, um, those guys who are from that area, they all participate mm -hmm. so a lot of them like sell over there bring you know their trailers serve food it's basically like a big airsoft tailgate party on nice. top of the game that's mm -hmm. dope that sounds like a lot of fun uh, let's see do, 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 do. Bob have you ever tr no don't even say it don't <laughs> even say it <laughs> God, the follow-up comments <laughs> uh, Bob have, have uh... you ever have you ever tried a pro win flat hop up? Uh, I personally haven't. Uh, I don't know if you guys. Which have one? The pro win flat hop. Oh, that combination. I use that. Yeah. That's a very good far shooting combination in my like um, VFC base guns. Nice. All right. Good to know. Uh, Bob, can you give me a gun, please? That's some sn sniper madness. Um, I can't give you a gun. However, trade for money. <laughs> trade trade for for money. money. Okay. Um, I. <laughs> Uh, if you guys do, if you want to have a chance of winning a gun, you can follow Brian at Echo One on his Instagram. Once he reaches 10,000 followers, he will be giving away the MTC model yep. gun in the back here, which we showed earlier on the live show. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, nice. Look at that. DMR sub shoots what? Over or under 500? Over five. Wow. That's crazy. Gosh. Lots of Harambe stuff on here. 
Oh, you said it. <laughs> I did say it. I did say it. Never um, forget. <laughs> um, do, 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 do. Okay. What's more dangerous than a potato with a polar star? Harambe. Um, why did I even say it? Why did I even say it? Um, out of all of these guns that you guys have brought today, which would you say are your personal favorites? My recce rifle I used at Nilsson West Games. Wait, did you already pull that up here, or is yeah, it the, the, S the SBR? This the, thing? the offset. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, the you field rifle. That one. Yeah. It's mm. This one. And what about you, Tang? Um, you have any favorites? Mine's been my VFC based uh, Block 2 clone. Mm -hmm. So it has like a 1 to 4 power scope. Looks pretty kosher for like, you know. I'm talking about all the guns you guys brought. Oh. Jesus, um, dang. Listen, come on now. Pick. Go BBs. Just throw I'm a BB like, at someone. I don't know. I'm getting tired of looking at all these rails. So I'm going to go with the AK at the moment. I knew you were going to say that. Why are you going against me? Because I got I to gotta be the opposite. <sighs> Oh, that'd be different. Um, now, out of curiosity, you said you used this gun at, uh, was it a Milson West game mm -hmm. or? Several game, different games. Now, this gun doesn't really look used at all, so were you actually playing? Well, we, had, we were forced stand? to clean it because yeah. we wanted it for pictures. This oh, really? was before we had them actually in, um, on sale, mm -hmm. so I had to like scrub it. You can see like all the wear marks. Yeah, I see I see a little bit of dirt right there, but other than that, it looks just There's pretty There's picture immaculate. evidence of me in the rain with it <laughs> in a video blog, too, so it's... The cool thing is, since like the U.S. flag, it didn't get worn. It's all mm. perfect. Merca. Mm -hmm. Ooh, ooh. So, uh, it's a question for the group. Uh, do you guys prefer a reflex sight or an ACOG? Ooh, tough decisions neither. here. Need, need, neither. Well, what do you? What then? If you don't like either of those, what do you prefer? I would use like a T1 copy or something like that, something simple. Reflex, I always get those shot out. Um, the T1s, I've had those shot out too, but not as many, so that wins by my records. Mm. What do you think? I like using like one to four power, so I can like ID stuff at the longer ranges, mm -hmm. um, but still have the ability like a red dot sight to when you're at one X. So yeah. you can still use it, like you know, for CQB or stuff like that. Nice. When you're only fixed at four X, it's pretty hard to pick up something close range. Mm -hmm. So you have to stop and really look for a moment, even if it's right in front of you. Oh, very good point. Just like this, perfect. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, if I had my druthers, uh, I would probably get either a T1 or a one to four sight with a red dot on top. Or why not both? Yeah. Yeah, or why not both? Might as well. Um, especially if you're spending you know a lot of money to have like one gun be your your baby or your, your customer you can use everywhere. Why not invest in a good sight or a good sight setup combo? Mm -hmm. um, now, if I had to choose out of any of the guns on this table, which ones I like the most? Here's another one on the table. Yeah. Yes. That has your name on it. The really color scheme cool. goes with your yellow based axe. I'm just saying. I, yeah, it is really cool. I, I'm not gonna lie, although it's either this one or the short one. You, Bob, one. your name why, starts why with a B. Why can't I pick something you guys already problem. picked? <sighs> Don't you remember the Simpsons episode in the treehouse in the comic book? I couldn't share. <laughs> I actually don't remember that episode. No, never mind. I'm old. I've been rewatching a Simpsons movie a lot lately, which is pretty hilarious in my mind. Mm. Have you seen that movie? Mm-hmm. I don't remember anything about it though. Okay. Well, my favorite part is when he's dumping sludge in the lake, and then when it when the entire lake turns black, he gets in the car. He frantically gets in the car. And he's like, drive, drive, drive! And the pig's in the driver's seat. And I don't know why, but that just made me laugh my ass off every every time. Um, thank you, Nathan Pagano. I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> Did he give you a shout out? What's that? Did he give you a shout for a change? Uh, no, he said, I love you, Bob. No homo. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, do you think the AK is beautimous? Yes, I absolutely do. Uh, I actually really like, I do like side folding stocks. However, uh, I'm going to be with Tang on this one. The under folding stocks in AKs, I think are absolutely amazing. I actually haven't been able to use one of those in, I feel like, almost a decade. But I just think they're awesome. They're like ergonomically horrible. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But they look cool. That's yeah. the important part. And that's half the battle. It's in all so. the movies, so. Mm -hmm. Quick question. Favorite camo? Hmm. I was wearing Flectarn in SoCal before it was cool. You just went full hipster on me, man. Back to the whole Styre. Super weird. I like all the weird stuff. So I had a Styre, Flectarn camo. Fair play. Tang? Mm. It can be no camo. 
be flannel. You can be jeans. Canadian oh, tuxedo. Those kids are trying to bring, bring back the flannel, oh. which I'm not really into, especially in the summer. How do you, yeah, it's hot. How do you Why kids you at Ballahack do it? <laughs> Whoa. Well, it's know, hot there. The folks at Ballahack like, wear flannel, I feel like, with a lot of class. I don't know how they do it, but they just make it happen. Hmm. I don't know. Um, I don't really have a particular Rodation. favorite. I don't even know what that looks you like. Just like the short shorts. I mean, I I just barely joined the multi glam revolution, so I guess multi camp. So you're just just going with multi camp at the moment. At the moment. All right. Well, to move on, I'm just gonna tell you guys I absolutely love Atax, and that it's totally based <laughs> on a, just something nerdy. The Atax Star FG. Wars. Yes, it looks just is like that, the Rebel Camo yeah, on does. the Forest Moon of Endor. It looks almost exact, which is the. But you pay how my... much for a muddy camo? You can literally get no. khakis and roll around in the Fact. mud. Bob made his first pair by not washing his white yeah. camo. Oh my god, <laughs> it's just, guys, that's a stain. You guys can see the camo that I haven't washed. You wouldn't even be able to. We could smell you downfield. <laughs> yeah, we smell actually, you later. We we did a shoot with my uh, with my Desert Atex camo, and we're oh. in the conference room. And right as we were setting up the shot, I just walked in the room, and 30 seconds later, the two guys across the desk were like, "Oh, god, <laughs> what is that?" So I had to literally take my BDs off and set them outside the room. Um, <laughs> how old do you have to be to join? This is important. Join the what? Federation? <laughs> no, the Federation of Planets. Don't uh, join a gang. That's not cool. It's from Aaliyah Thompson. I assume she means uh, join the Airsoft community or join a Milsom game or join just to play a regular day of Airsoft. And just quickly answer your question, it does vary per field and event. Uh, some fields uh, let you play as low as 10 years old. Some, mm -hmm. some as low as 12 or 14. Um, a lot with of adult supervision yeah. with adult supervision very much so um, and there are a lot of airsoft events that are 14 or 16 years or older like a lot of our BB Wars events generally players as young as 13 or 14 come and play uh, most Milsim events are 18 plus mm -hmm. but there are exceptions to that rule um, the SCAR is the best and yes it is one of the best guns depending on uh, mm -hmm. what, what kind of guns you like to play with it's weird because we had a guy back here who you guys remember Mark Yes. Yes. Um, there was like probably two years where he would only run... Mark with a Q. Mark with a Q, that's right. Um, he only liked to run scars, and that was just basically because he, you know, he was a tech, or at least he, he liked to be referred to as one, because he would just <laughs> do all these different things to get the highest rate of fire build he could, and he got his, his scar up to, I think it was 43 rounds a second, and it was not a dual sector gear build. You know how he got those scars? I have no idea. Back in the day... I'm hoping John from Insights listening, when he had his uh, first field opening, I invited Mark with to go Q. there. Yes, Mark with the Q. Thank you. To go join us at our VIP like soft opening before it's open to public, and he got to use the Echo One Mark 17 prototype, Ooh. ear to ear grin. He's like, ah, <laughs> using it. So I think maybe that like permanently scarred him to oh, use. See what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh man, Mark Q rip, <laughs> no, Mark. insight rip, Indeed. waiting. Yeah, I've been waiting for a new. Yeah, we to need to get. Up. I'm waiting for that too. I want to go. I don't know what's what's happening. It was you. supposed to open in uh, April mm. this year. Well, I'll still wait for it. Yeah. This is an interesting question. What's a good non-Russian wood furniture AK loadout? I've never actually heard that question before. What? Wait, AK? Oh, like a non-Russian AK? Like Hungarian or Romanian? Oh, oh we have Romanian. Yeah, I, I thought so, yeah. The A112 and A1, or A111 from ENL, those are like the Gen 1s. Those are basically the Romanians. You know the, that from the signature folding wire stock? Yeah. It looks like a crutch almost with a f integrated wooden vertical grip? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, didn't I thought Jet came out to uh, like yeah, Cossack Offensive? That. Okay, because mm -hmm. I remember he was getting flamed for bringing a Romanian AK and playing on the Russian side. Mm, it could very, be very well a, a pickup. Okay, fair What point. about the AMD 65? That's non Russian, but AK. Yeah, that'd be Hungarian. Group question uh, Gas blowback, AEG, or Polar Star? What's your preference? AEG. AEG, because just I like to work on stuff. Fair play. Um, I'm personally a gas blowback guy. However, lately, uh, I've been getting back into AEGs, and it actually feels really liberating. 
you know, to have, uh, what's that called, uh, increased magazine capacity and mm -hmm. competitive value. But essentially, I'm a lot more competitive on the field than I would be with a gas blowback gun, uh, but I still, you know, I love gas blowbacks. So. So I just like that they're not $50 magazines that weigh like yes. five pounds each. That's another thing is like with AEG magazines, like I have no qualms whatsoever with hitting the magazine release, letting it drop out. Whereas a gas mag, I literally have to pull that. AEG like, mag? Still good. If I did that with the gas blowback mag, dead. Yeah, done. Um, do, 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 let's see if there are any other questions. Um, and these are like a pack of five for like 60 bucks or something like that. Can't go wrong. What type of LiPo battery brand do you run? Echo One LiPo batteries, they are the best. <laughs> okay. More power. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your thoughts, Tang? Are you going to echo what? Uh, no. Brian said? Echo what? I had to, I had to, man. <laughs> Um, I personally uh, I use Tenergy batteries, but that's mainly because we we have that laying around uh, um, uh, the marketing department office. We just got like a small box of them, so we've been using them for just a little while. Um, but again, I generally don't run batteries since I am generally using uh, gas blowback rifles. Um, let's see. Well, that's something. Hmm? Um, okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, what do you think about Novrich? Uh, interesting question. Uh, I've had the chance to hang out with him and meet him. He's a really nice guy. He's really fun to play airsoft with. One thing I did notice is that uh, he actually speaks English really well. However, you know, when I'm trying to be sarcastic, it just went right over his head and it looked like I was being a dick. So I had to, like, stop being as sarcastic. Look like. No. <laughs> oh, thank you, Ting. Uh, yeah, he's a great guy. Uh, and he's a very accomplished and good sniper. Um, so, yeah, if you ever a chance to play with him, I'd highly suggest it. Um... Uh, do you guys have any thoughts on Novrich? I saw him in passing at the last Milsom game, but we were all busy, so I nodded, and I don't think he recognized me, so I... <laughs> so he didn't shoot me from a distance, so... You wouldn't cool. have known anyway. Yeah, I wouldn't have known, but cool guy in my book. It's funny, I was actually trying to get uh, Novrich to uh, shoot the Imperial Commander at BB, BB Wars, I'm, trying to blank, I'm blanking on what episode it was, but BB Wars, Water Wars, I'd asked him, I was like, hey, my friend Vince is the Imperial Commander. If you can, at any point in the game, if you can <laughs> shoot him in the groin, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> Vince had played a trick on me recently, so I, you know, you know I'll, I'll uh, well, I just, I was waiting to critical critical hit him, so that, that would have been great. Thankfully, though, Vince actually shot an over it, so that yeah. happens. Um, but yeah, check out his channel if you can, I'm sure you guys have. Um, I can't reply to that question either. Um, okay, what is your preference of BBs to use as far as, you know, gram? Uh, like we have, let's see, we have .28 gram BBs here. We actually two, have two sets of .28 uh, Jag Arms match grade BBs here. Uh, we've got bios and regular BBs. What, what weight BBs do you guys prefer to use generally? .28s. Yeah? Yep. Okay. Same, 0.28s and up. Um, if it's for indoors, where it doesn't really matter too much, probably two fives because mm -hmm. all my flat hop, modify, whatever, pro win combination requires something heavier anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally generally use 0.25s in a CQB, uh, CQB arena. Um, outdoors, I usually vary between 0.28s and 0.30s. Uh, 0.30s seem to just work really well in my LM4 or gas blowback mm -hmm. guns. Uh, 0.28s or 0.25s in the AEGs. Um, yeah. At least my feelings on that. Uh, we're actually a little bit over time, so if any of you guys have any last-minute questions, throw them in the chat uh, right now. We'll try to get to it. Hurry. Uh, but I want to reiterate with you guys: make sure to check out um, a lot of uh, all these Mad Bull products and Jag Precision products we have on our website. Check out the line of ENL AKs. Check out the PHX 15s, which Jag Precision has been nice enough to bring a wide variety of models: an SBR, a DMR, and a field platform rifle, just to show you the wide variety of what you can accomplish with the PHX 15 series. Check out their metal uppers, their metal bodies. I actually really like this Lantec. Mm -hmm. body is pretty nice and i think it's really cool that this comes with what was it uh like a full a full uh, hop up unit as well yeah. and I, I was very also surprised that you can actually attach an led follower into that hop up unit mm -hmm. that's crazy so is that is that actually kind of work intensive to do that no um the hard part would be i guess using a small nine volt battery or other like a third party little battery to mm -hmm. put in the hand <laughs> it's metal it'll be fine to if you use like the the tracer option you'd have to use a small wire that's provided and run like a small battery up front mm -hmm. or something like that and just take that account when you're taking the upper off other than that 
it's very simple. You don't have to run it into your, your main power battery. Mm-hmm. Uh, also check out uh, the Modify Mags, which we mentioned earlier in the show. They've got a wide variety of mid caps and different colors, high caps and different colors as well. Yes. Uh, but also very important to note that uh, they have both mid caps and high caps with an LED light follower mm-hmm. that can turn the magazine itself into a tracer unit, which if you've ever thought about purchasing a tracer unit, you notice that some of them are 60 70 80 90 or $100 or more. However, these mags, I believe, are $30 or less. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so you can have tracer unit functionality in a single mag for a, a third tracer of the price. and a gun like this or any length a gun, gun like this with a cool flash hider. You know, just change the mag out and you're done. Hmm. Okay, um, I'll try and get to one or two more questions. What lightweight plate carrier do you recommend? Hmm. The DEFCON LPC would probably be one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's probably the only one I would recommend. Yeah, Thanks. LPC. Uh, there's also Otherwise, chest rigs. Yeah, chest rigs are very lightweight. Uh, there's also the JPC. Um, one thing actually um, I've been planning around or thinking about going just out to the field just to test out to see if it works. I don't think it's that functional, but I actually have the DEFCON War Dog Pack in the front office. Um, I just thought about going to just a local game and just throwing that on my back and having like a primary gun with just a few mags and if that runs out, just have like uh, my KP9 or some other like pistol in the bag and just flip it forward. You could do that. Yeah. Or why not just have a slung or a kydex? Hmm? Why do you need it in the bag? Because I always thought it'd be fun, like just kind of to test myself, like gun on the back. It'd be not really a real world scenario, but I'm thinking of um, the division or something. But just having to flip the bag out, open up the bag, pull out the gun, and go to town. Mm, okay. I mean, it's more of like it's not so much like th- this is like so much easier. It's more of like oh, it's like a what tr- if? Yeah, what if? Or like hey, this is my nightly challenge. That's like when I go to play local CQB arenas, I try and challenge myself in some way because I've been playing airsoft for so long. It's kind of boring just to go out there with an AEG and just go play. I'd rather so you just do- spice it up. Yeah, mm. exactly, exactly. Uh, throw some roadblocks in the way. Um, Oh, this is interesting. Um, four potato or V grip. What? You ever seen the potato grip? No. Really? No. You're looking at me like I'm an idiot. I'm, ser- I'm serious. Is. It's I. I first saw it in uh, Battlefield, uh, but it's a it's an actual. I don't know if you call it a vertical grip, but it's like uh, a potato shaped grip uh, that you can bolt onto the bottom of a gun. This is like, it's a real potato or like. Or the potato okay. shape. Let me what? just find it. Let me just find it so you guys can see. I'm learning. Okay. There. There's. Oh, the I've seen that. Well, you guys are acting like I'm an idiot. Look there like it a is. I didn't know that's the name it's of it. It's called the potato grip. Okay, that's it cool. That like makes sense. It's ergonomic. Yeah. I wish I could show it to you guys out there, but if you want to, just Google potato grip, and it should come up. Spell uh, it carefully. Safe search off. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Okay. Uh, favorite food, real quick. Bacon. Mm, yeah, bacon. Pizza or steak or bacon. You guys, you guys covered a lot of it. Um, all right. Do, do, we should talk about shotguns in a video. Like, that kid's asking about a shotgun. Well, he's asking sniper rifle, assault rifle, or shotgun. That's well, very broad. Well, I, it's like, which one would you prefer if you could only have one? Maybe we should oh. bring shotguns next time. Maybe you cool should. Video. Mm, I actually saw something. a post you guys had of a wide variety of shotguns. That was pretty cool. Yes. Yeah. A 12 right Something center. coming soon. <laughs> Ah, I'm winking and nodding. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Mario, what are you doing over there? Are you watching Ma- us? Mac Daddy Mario? Yeah. Is that, is that what it was? <laughs> he's actually he's uh, luxuriously lounging on the ground there. He actually has no idea what was, what was done on that car. I don't like his legs are like that. I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Stop man spreading. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, all right, guys. Well, uh, we're actually going to close out uh, close out the live show, and I just want to reiterate one last thing on a wide variety of our overview videos, and even when we're in the back uh, or at the firing range, we're generally always using these Jag Precision Match Grade BBs. So if you like how they function in our live streams uh, or when we're over, or doing an overview on guns, check these BBs out. They're awesome. We've used them in a wide variety of events, and like I mentioned on our live streams and tests. Uh, And also check out the PHX-15, check out the entire line of ENL AKs. I'm a firm supporter of those AKs, they're awesome. As well as the rest of the Mad Bull products, 
Uh, and modify. Modify mm -hmm. products as well. Those mags, especially with the LED followers, are amazing. Mm -hmm. um, also, don't miss out on our summer Black Friday sale. Coast to coast, each one of our walk-in stores and online, there's going to be doorbusters available, discounts, deals, and giveaways, I believe. In addition to the swap meet sale, uh, well, it's pretty much the summer Black Friday slash swap meet sale at our California walk-in stores. So if you want to come on out, give, uh, not give away, but uh, sell your gear, guns, or accessories. <laughs> uh, give it away. Sign, yeah, don't <laughs> give them away. You can sign up for a swap meet slot in store at our California walk-in store, either before the sale or possibly the day of, but there are limited slots and tables available. Um, in addition, if you guys want a chance at one of our last mystery boxes for just a little bit, get on our Future Weapons mystery box. There's just a little bit under 20 left, and you don't want to miss out on the awesome deals in that mystery box. Check it out. Check it out. You can see everything that's in the mystery <laughs> box. On there. Check it out. Um, anyway, thank you guys for everyone for stopping by and watching the live show. Thank you. Brian and Tang, thank you so much for showing up. Thanks for having Mac us. Daddy Mario, thank you for, for luxuriating in the background. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. See you guys. Bye-bye. Jeez.